Hi everyone, welcome to Joanna's Classroom. I'm Joanna, the teacher. Today we are going to create a form that you can complete using Microsoft Word to get something like this. This form includes different types of form fields. In the first form field, which is this one here, I can add a picture. These are all normal text fields where I can click and just add some text. This one is a date picker. So if I click here, I will get a calendar and I can uh, add the, the date I want to. Then down here, I also put some check boxes that you can use one or multiple check boxes. Then I have a drop down list with two options to choose from. And then I have this one. It's also a, dro a drop down list, but it's kind of special because you have three options, but if the option you need is not here, these are language courses, for example. If the option you want is not here, you can actually add your own and actually state the, say that in this uh, instruction. So let's say I want to, to take a, a course and the course I want is uh, German A2 and it's not here. So I can just click here and add it and it will stick. The last form field is this one here. I have a big box here because I want the person who's going to complete the, the form to be able to write more than one line if they want to. So this is what we are going to achieve at the end of this tutorial. If you think this is useful for you, just stick around. Hi everyone, before we start our class, you need to get ready for the class project. Don't worry, it couldn't be easier. The only thing you have to do for now is get this file here with the title, Our Class Project Up-to-Date Skills Student Application Form. This is the Microsoft Word file that you're going to use as a follow along worksheet to practice what you have learned in each step of our class. So see you in step one. So the first step is to prepare your document. I usually create a normal Word document first using tables and only add my form fields after that. I have chosen this file because it allows me to show you multiple form fields that you can use with Microsoft Word. When I'm creating a form, I prefer to create a table because it makes it easier for me to place my form fields. Then I know exactly where I want my form fields to go. So this is a table I have created and I know it's not very appealing, but this is not how it will look when I'm done with it. First, I don't want all these borders and they are too dark. I'm actually going to pick a new color for these borders. So I will select my table, go here to, uh, to table design and pick another pen color. Maybe this one, this uh, gray uh, one. I'm going to select all borders now. As I've mentioned before, and as you've seen, my form only has a couple of lines. Those are the lines I want to keep, and it's the line just uh, below each form field. To do that, I'm going to select my table again, and I'm going to choose no border. Now I'm going back to every form field I, I want to have, and I'm going to select the border I want. For example, here I want a picture, and I want the outside border, so I'm just going to click here. Next to the name field, I just want the bottom border. Actually, that's what I want in most fields. Uh, let me just do this very quickly. So there's another one for the city, another one for the zip code, another one for the state, the country, the email, and the phone. Now there is another line field with a bottom border. Here, I don't want any borders, so I'm going to leave it like this. I remember there was another line here, and 
This one is also with a line. And here it's that big box that I've showed you at the beginning of the tutorial. So here I want the, the outside borders. So now, as you can see, the, the form is much lighter now. It doesn't have all those boxes, but if you do prefer the boxes, of course, you can just keep the lines. Another thing is, this is all black, okay? All the text in my file is black. I want to change it so you can just edit it as a normal Word file, but I want to do this very quickly too. Now I want this one to be white. So this is just part of the prep. You should do this before starting to, to complete your form or, sorry, let me just choose this one here. Oh, sorry, not gray, white it is, and then also white. So. The next thing is you want to decide, you should decide if you want your form to be black once people complete it. So this is where the text that people are going to include is going to appear. If you want it to be black, then you can select black. But if you want it to have another color, I suggest you edit the text now or the cells now because it's too complex to edit later once to insert the form field. So what you can do is click twice on, on the cell you want your text to appear. Once it, get, once it turns gray and I'm still editing normally, you just edit the text up here. So the, I'm, I'm okay with the, the font size, but I'm not okay with the color. As I've told you, it's black. I want this blue here. And I'm going to do this for all the form fields. And believe me, it's much easier if you do this before adding your form field. So I'm just going to double click on all the cells where I'm going to include some form fields and I'm going to select the color I want the text to appear once people complete the form. So there's another one here, another one here. I'm going to leave this one maybe gray because I don't need it to be blue there. This gray would be good. I'm going to keep this one blue and this one blue and the big box here also blue. Now I'm going to save my file. Well, now we are ready to create our form fields. And to do that, we need to use the developer tab, but that's the next step. Now it's time for our class project. You have to prepare your form. Use the document that I told you to download at the beginning of the lesson. Do not skip these steps. These are very important. They might look unnecessary because you probably already know how to use a Word file, but believe me, this will save you lots of time when we are inserting the form fields in the next steps. Now we are ready to create our form fields. To add content or form fields to your Word file, we have to use the Developer tab. But as you can see up here, there are many tabs, but I don't have the Developer tab, so I have to enable it. The Developer tab is where you will find all the tools you need to create your fillable form. However, that tab isn't usually displayed by default. So if you already have the Developer tab enabled, you can skip this step and move to step three. And if you don't see the Developer tab in your ribbon here at the top, then I'm going to show you how you can set it up. So if the developer tab isn't displayed, you can just add it to the ribbon. There are two ways to do it. The easiest way is to right click somewhere on, on this uh, gray ribbon and click on customize ribbon. I'm going to click to show you. So then you will see this window here. I'm going to close it for now because I'm going to show you some other way you can get to, to that window. So the other option is by clicking here on file, then go down and look for the word options. Inside this window, you choose the option customize ribbon. And here we have the exact same window that we have opened before. Knowing how to get to this window like this might be useful if you are using a different word version. Well, whatever option you choose, you will see this window here. Now go here on the main tabs and look for the word developer. You have to tick this box. So once you tick this box, you can click OK and the developer tab appears here in the ribbon. Now, if you don't want this developer tab to be on display all the time, you can just go back to that window, follow the same steps and you can just 
uh, uh, remove it once you're done with your project. Now, we have the developer tab here, so now we're good to go. Let's work on our class project. Well, you just have to enable the developer tab and then you'll become officially a developer and you can move to the next step. We are going to start by inserting a picture control or a picture field in this box here. A picture control is very useful if you create templates in Word, but you can also add a picture control or a picture field to a form. And this is what we're going to do now. So to add any form field, you have to click on the cell where you want your form field to appear. Then you have to go to the developer tab and you have to choose one of the options, options you want. So you have here several options. We are going to go through most of these today. So, but now we're going to start with a picture, with, which is this one here, picture content control. So click here and your picture goes there, okay? Whoever is completing the form will just have to click here to add a picture. You can edit the picture format, just like a normal one. To do that, just go to picture format, and then you can choose one of these styles here. I prefer using some thin shadow around my pictures. So I'm going to click here on pic picture effects, go down to shadow and choose this one here that just offers me a light shadow around all the picture. You can also resize your picture to whatever size you choose. You might have to do that if you add some shadow to, to it, just by clicking and dragging. And you can also set some specific properties uh, for the picture field. So just click somewhere in the blue background. Don't click here, otherwise you will be asked to add the picture right now. So click somewhere on the blue background, go to the developer tab, and then you can choose properties. I never use these two fields here, the title and the tag, but they might be important if you are connecting your form to a database. This option here, show as, lets you choose how to highlight your field so that people know that there's something they have to complete. For pictures, I prefer the default option, which is this one here, bounding box. Let's see what happens if you choose the other one. So I'm going to click and choose start and tag. Now click OK. And as you can see, they will just show you these tags. Now I'm going back to my properties box. And I'm going to choose the other one, which is none. If I click none, you will just see the blue background. This is not something I like. And uh, I prefer, let me go back to the, I prefer the bounding box. I think it's great for pictures because people see this box here when they click on the picture field, they see this symbol, which most people are familiar with, and they get to read this call to action, which is click here to insert a picture. Let me go back to properties. The, not, the next one is color. If you choose a different color, gray is the default version, you will see what happens. So I'm going to choose red here. So, okay. And as you can see, the border becomes red. This border, you don't see it only when you click somewhere uh, over the, the, the blue box. Now, but you do get to see some red shade if you choose red. I'm still going back to the default version because I like the gray option. Let us go back to the property box. You have two more options here. Oh, actually three more options. If you tick this one, remove content control when contents are edited, this will disappear once someone adds a picture. So let, let's give it a try. So let me add a picture. Let's imagine I'm the one completing the form. And this is me, by the way, a long time ago. Well, as you can see, the tools that enabled you to add a picture disappeared. If you click somewhere on this box, you will not see the, the option to add a different picture or to change the picture. So I don't use this feature because people who are completing the form might change their mind about the picture they have chosen and they won't be able to do anything about it. So let's go back to the other option. I'm going to go back here twice. Then I'm going back to the property box is still unchecked. And this way the picture controls are still here. 
Now I'm going to insert a picture again. And here am I again. So now if I click on the picture, I will still have the option to change it. So change picture and then I can go back and change it. So just going to leave it here now. In the properties box, let me go back there. We also have these two options. So if you check this box here, content control cannot be deleted. Content control are all these form fields that you have and the instructions that you have there. Uh, so I don't usually use this. I just leave it empty. Now the next one is contents cannot be edited. Well, this doesn't make much sense in a form because you want people to edit uh, the contents. You want people to be able to include information. So I would leave these three empty. And this is it. So we have a picture already. Now we go to the next field. It's project time again. Now you're going to insert your very first form field, a picture field and the word file that I told you to download at the beginning of this lesson. And don't forget to try all those options. At the end, you can choose the one you prefer, but you should try all those options that we have seen in the lesson. For the name field, we are going to use a different control. It's the text field. You, again, click or tap where you want to insert the text field. Go to the developer tab, and you will see that there are two options for text field, these two with the letters here. This one here is rich text content control, and this one here is the plain text content control. If you choose the first option, the one that appears bold, uh, you are giving users the ability to format the text as bold, and I believe they can also add it color. And if you want to give them the possibility to type multiple paragraphs, this is also the option you, you, you should choose. But we are not going to see this one now for the name field. For the name field, we are going to choose this one, which is the plain text content control. Now it's a normal text field. We don't need much editing. So I'm just going to click here. And now we have this box here. This is our form field. There is a message here, a call to action saying, click or tap here to enter text. If you're okay with the text, you can just leave it as is, but you can also edit the text that appears in this box. If you need to change this text into something else, you have to go to the developer tab again, and you have to click on the button design mode. Design mode is turned off. To change this type of text, you have to enter here. So click there. Now the design mode is on. This is what, is, this is what allows you to change this text here. I'm just going to change it to enter name here, enter name here, and this is enough. So this font here, uh, it's not the same that I'm using on my file. If you go here, you can also edit it. There is Times New Roman 10, and I am actually going to use Arial, and I want it smaller. I want it to be an eight. Let me just zoom this a bit so that you can see whatever I'm doing here. Now, I don't want to change anything else here. So I'm going to go to the developer tab, tab again, and I'm going to turn off the design mode so that I can edit my document. Now it's time to set specific properties for this particular text. So I'm going back to the property box. Since I'm not using a database, I'm going to keep these two here. Again, you have the show as option and it's not much different. So if you click on start and tag, you will get to see this. And this will show like this if you leave this option here. And if you leave none, then you will not have anything, including that box. I actually prefer this one. I will still, still have my message here uh, with a gray background. And if you choose the, the, sorry, the default option, you will get this bounding box. I prefer 
for a normal text field to leave it with your last option in this case, which is none. If you need to delete your form field for some reason, sometimes hitting the lead is not enough. So you right click over the box and choose the option remove content control. The same for pictures or, or any other content control field. Let's hear what else we can edit about this. I'm going to the properties box. Well, we've seen this in the picture, so we don't need to go over these again, but now we have a different one here. As you can see, it says, use a style to form a text typed into the empty control. So if you click here, you will see some options here of different texts. I find it very difficult to use. And that's why I have prepared my table before choosing the blue color and the size of the font that I wanted. So I don't use this option here, but you can play, play with it a bit and check uh, what, what else you can do with it. These options, these three here are, are exactly the same as we have seen in the picture. And now plain text properties is a new one. If you need this field to have multiple lines or multiple par paragraphs, you can click this box. I don't think it is necessary for a name field, so I'm just going to leave it like this and click OK. Now that I have edited my text fields, I'm going to copy paste it into all the fields where I want a similar text to appear. This will save us some time. So let me just copy this and paste it into where all the fields where I want a normal text box to text box to appear. So this is not for a text box. So now, as you can see, I wrote enter name here, but I need uh, something different to appear here. So I'm going back into design mode and I'm going to change all the words that I need. But this time I just need to change a word. So it's all quicker if you do it, some copy pasting before. So city here, this is for the state. This is for the phone, zip code. Then we have the country. Then we have the email, nationality here. This is a, a, a form for students who are applying for a language course. That's why I'm asking for these data. So first language here and well, no more text fields here. So I'm going back to the top of my form. I'm going to save this. Now I can turn off design mode. Now it's time to work on your class project. Make sure you complete all the tasks in this lesson before you move to the next step. Our next field is a date field. If you have a date field on your form, you can insert a date picker instead of a text field. A date picker is actually a calendar. You have probably used similar features before. So click on the cell where you want your calendar or your date picker to appear. Go up to the developer tab and choose this one here, date picker content control. So you can change this message here. If you go to designer mode, I just want pick a date and I want to change this text here, the font to size eight and gray. Then I'm going to leave the developer mode and I'm going to check the properties for the date field. For date fields, I like using the bounding box. And now down here, you can choose how you want your date to display once the user completes it on the form. You can change the country here, and then you will see that the way the dates are displayed also changes. Then you can choose whatever suits you best. I'm going to pick this one here and click OK. Let's work on our class project. The date picker field is not a feature that we see very often when we open a Microsoft Word file, so make the best of it.
Let's go down to the bottom of my form. And now we are going to insert some check boxes here. So I'm going to click on the cell where I want my checkbox to appear. I'm going back to the developer tab, look for, for my content control is, controls, and this is the one I want. Checkbox content control, click there. Now this is big enough, but you can actually change the size of the box. Just select it, go to the home tab, and you can choose any other font size you want. So let's say you want a smaller, you can go, you can go here and just pick nine or whatever size. I want a 16, it's good. Now let's go to the developer tab now and check the properties you have for the checkboxes. We have seen all these before, but these two options here are specific for the checkboxes. This one allows us to show the symbol that is going to be displayed once the box is checked. This is the default one across, but if you click on change, you can add or change uh, the symbol that's going to appear once, this, once the box is checked. So I'm just going to cancel this because I don't want to change it. You can also change the unchecked box. Well, now we can see the square here, uh, but you can also change it into another symbol. Let's click OK and leave it like this. Now that I have edited it, I'm going to copy paste it into the places where I want it to show. Let's go back to our project. It's checkbox time. This time we have to insert three checkboxes in those fields, just like I did in the video. And you have to try all those options, like inserting something else instead of a cross or changing the box itself. So have some fun. In the next section of my forum, which is this one here, I asked the students if they have ever attended a course at Update Skills. So this question requires a yes or no answer. So I can create a form with those two options. For this particular field here, I'm going to choose a drop down list. In a drop down list, users can only select from the list of choices they are given. So let's add one. Click on the cell where you want your drop down list to appear. Go to the developer tab and look for this one here. You will see drop down list content control. This one is very similar, but this is a combo box. This is not the one we want now. The one we want is the drop down list content control. Now, again, you can change this text here. To do so, you have to go into design mode. Well, it says choose an item. I prefer choose an option and I don't want a full stop. Now I'm going to the developer tab and I'm going to turn off the design mode. Now we have to set specific properties for our drop down list field. So we go to the developer tab and go into the properties box. I'm going to leave these as are. I'm going to uh, choose the bounding box for show as I like to use it for a drop down list because of this arrow here. And now we are going down to the bottom of our box where you can read drop down list properties. There is an option, a default option, which is choose an item. You can leave it or you can remove it. Uh, I'm going to leave it as is, but I'm going to add my own, which are the answers yes. So this is the first one. And then I click again to add a new one. And here it says display name, I add the other one, no. And now we have our two options. So you can add as many uh, options to your list as you want to do that. Just click add and go to the display name and just write whatever it is you need. So uh, I'm okay now. So, and let me see, I, I need to change this tag. Let me just go quickly into design mode because I wanted to match the other tag. So Arial and size eight. Now let me go back to the developer tab and turn off the design mode. Class project time, you're going to insert a drop down list in a Microsoft Word file. How cool is that?
For this field here, where it says, please select the course you are applying for, I want students to name the course they are applying for. I could choose another drop down list, just like the, the one we did before, but I'm going to use a combo box instead so that you can learn how to use this control here. And I'm going to use this one then. So combo box content control, click there, and I'm going to change this text. To do so, I'm going into design mode again, and I'm going to change this text. This time I am going to type, choose from the list or add, a different course. Now, I think it's important that this message shows the users that they can actually add some information because the combo box just looks like a normal drop down list. So by adding this part here, add a different course, then I think people will, will understand that they can do that. Let me turn off the design mode go to the properties box and check the options that you have. So I'm going to leave it with a bounding box around it, but the other options are just the same. So we have seen these before, and now you have again the drop down list properties. You can delete the default option. So you just click on and, and, and hit remove, and then you can add, click here to add your own. So let's say I want to offer the students the possibility of choosing English A1, first option, then second option, German A1, and third option, Portuguese A1. Click OK. And now, as you can see, if you click here, you will see those three options. Now, let me just select this text again. I always forget to edit the font. Go into design mode, sorry, select the text and go to the home tab, choose Arial, choose eight, go back to the developer tab and turn off the design mode. Now, once you click here, you have the three options. Now, if someone wanted to write another course, they could just click here or it said choose from the list and then they would type, let's say they wanted a different level. They are offered here levels A1. They would want, for example, German A2. So they would just type in German A2. And this is the option that, that I would see when they sent me the file. Let's work on our class project and insert a combo box. This makes me think of a shopping list. It appears I always seem to forget something. So have some fun. In the last section of my form, I want to give the students some freedom to write inside this text box. We are going to use rich text control, which is a free form data entry that gives the students the possibility to type multiple lines of text or line breaks and even edit the, the font somehow. So click or tap where you want the text field to appear, go to the developer tab and look for this one, okay? Rich text content control, click there. Now you know how it goes, you can go into design mode and you can change your message here. I'm going to write, enter your notes. I'm going to select the text, edit the font again. and I'm going to turn off the design mode. You can also set specific properties for this particular text field, just like we did before. So go to the properties box. There's nothing different here. So you, I'm going to choose none because this is still a text field. So I, I don't like to see boxes around text fields. Uh, and these are not new. These are exactly the same. The option that we had down here to add multiple lines when you chose this option here doesn't appear because if you choose a rich text control, you are already uh, giving your users the possibility of adding 
multiple paragraphs to the text that they are going to write. So click OK. It's class project time again. You're going to insert the last form field. Remember to complete all the tasks before you move to the next step. Now let's go for the last step. So I'm going to scroll up here. I'm going to save my file. And for this document to work as a form and to keep its layout as it is, it is important to limit how much other people can edit it. To limit what others can do to your documents, you have to use the restrict editing command, which you can find in two different tabs. So you can go to the developer tab, which is the one we have been using. And then you will see this box here with a lock. So if you click there, this, this panel here will open. I'm going to close it for now. And I'm going to show you the other option, uh, which is always available. So if you click on the review tab, you will also find the box, the restrict editing box, the one with the lock. And if you click there, you will see the exact same thing. I don't use the first options because I don't have different styles in my text, but option two is the one that's most important. If you check this box here where it says, allow only this type of editing in the document, this, uh, op this drop down list will be activated. You have several options. You have fill in forms, track changes, comments, and no changes, read only. The one we want for a form is filling in forms. By enabling this, you will actually be protecting your file and students or users will not be able to, to change the text you have in your form. They will only be able to add information in the form fields. Well, after you tick this box and choose filling in forms, you have to click here. Uh, step number three, start enforcement. So you have to click on yes, start enforcing protection. When this window opens, you can create a password and you have to confirm it and then click OK. But you can also leave it as it is and just click OK. However, if you choose not to protect it with a password, anyone can click on the restrict editing button to open this panel here. And if they understand how this works, they can easily click on stop protection to edit your file freely. And then it will be able to change this very easily. So the best option is to click yes, start enforcing, and then just choose any password you want. Click OK. It's also important to remember the password you choose if you want to edit your document again. If you forget the password, you will not be able to use the form fields and you won't be able to ed edit your document. Let me close this panel now. Now let me just delete my picture. This is our form. And as you can see, because the document is protected, I can click here, but I cannot change this text. Uh, people can only enter uh, text in the form fields. Let's work on our class project again. Safety first, because we are going to protect our document. Or maybe I should say safety last, because we have to save this for last. Now let me just delete my picture. This is our form. You can click and start adding text. You can choose your text boxes. I'm going to delete the text I wrote, but my options will still be there. The same with my lists. I can choose items, but I cannot change the text. And here I can enter my notes. 
I want to show you now how this form looks once it is completed. Well, I have chosen blue for the form. So these are all complete, okay? I can delete this and those messages will appear again. And this is our form. And as you can see here, we have a text with multiple lines. Let me scroll up. The person completing the form can save it as a Word file or as a PDF file to avoid additional changes to the information they added. The PDF file will no longer be a form though, uh, but you can also create PDF forms using free tools. It's time for our class project now. We have to test the form and we're almost done. You have to check if every field is working or if they need some adjustment. If you'd like to support the channel, please leave a thumbs up on our video, subscribe and hit the bell to get updates, and most important of all, share a link to our videos on social media. Well, I guess this is it. Thanks for watching.